Let's go through how to be able to fly in the open world zones of Warframe. So you're going to be able to use your Arcwing. To do this, we're going to need two things. We need the Arcwing segment or launcher segment to be built into the ship. And then we need to build the gear version Arcwing launcher. Now, I think this was a reward from the Arcwing mission, which we get for opening up the Mars Junction. But the wiki says it comes from just simply having this in your inventory. One of those two things should cause this to be built for you but we can't start building this until we've built the Arcwing launcher. I'm probably going to repeating myself a lot because this has taken a long time and obviously I've had to record this in segments but in total we're going to need 100 grocterol, 100 iridite, some fish oil and some oxium. So just make sure you have those things and I started to work on those things as you make your way through the video. But the first thing you need to do is find a clan. I've already found one so I'm in one already. Don't think it's going to bring it up. If you're not already in a clan but the easiest way to do this is to come to your communication tab here. Press on clan. When you are not in a clan, you will see a menu that looks like this. You can form your own clan and build your own. This is a long process, but it's entirely doable. If this is something that you would prefer, if you want to play solo and grind everything up yourself, you can do this. This is going to take forever, though. I definitely would advise doing this later after being someone else's clan. That way you can see kind of how it works a bit better. Either way, you're going to come on to search for a clan. What I would probably look at marking here is beginner friendly and you are going to want max research complete. In addition, you are not going to want to go any smaller than the storm or the mountain clans. So these are going to be clans that have the most players in. These smaller ones are likely to expect more of you. Let's see if we've got any anything here. Look, we can see uh, this is competi competitive. Uh, they require a regular login requirement. So depending on you, just select a clan that looks like it's going to have all of the things that you need. Probably the most important one is the max research complete and if it's marked for, for beginner friendly they should generally be quite helpful for when you have when you have any questions or anything like this once you've decided on a clan that you feel like you want to join press on it and it'll ask you to send in a message i'm obviously not going to be trying to join a clan right now uh, but that's how i would look at going one if obviously if you're on pc we do have our own channel clan on the pc unfortunately though even though we do have crossplay, pc clan cannot accept um playstation or xbox players yet Hope that's something that gets fixed in the future. The invite for that will be in the description. Invites are processed through Discord. Has to be this way because if I'm off playing other games for the channel, then I'm not going to be giving you invites based on every comment that comes under this. And my moderators aren't going to be coming here every day to check the comments just in case. So, you know, if, if you can't download a free app to ask for an invite, then I'm not going to ask my moderators to run around after you. Hopefully that's reasonable. Again, so once you've joined a clan, you will then have the ability to build a clan key. Of course, again, I don't really have this available to show you guys right now. In fact, I don't even have any keys to build. I can't even show you the keys tab. There will be a tab up at the top when you have keys to build. Just go ahead and build the key. Uh, it's not too expensive. I think it takes 12 hours to finish. Once that's finished, you will then be able to go to your clan's dojo, which I'm going to do right now. Once you arrive in the dojo, you're going to want to go to this fast travel tab and we need to go to the Tenno lab. So provided your clan has researched the Arcwing launch a segment research already, you come on over here, we can replicate it down on the bottom right. You can hover over it to see what you'll actually need to build it. Replicate the blueprint. I don't need to do this. Obviously, I already own it. You only need one. I don't think it even lets you buy another one by the look of it. It's all good. Once you have that, you can go ahead and leave your clan and go back to your ship. We will find it here in the miscellaneous tab so you can start the build. Okay, so once you've joined a clan, or let's say you want to get prepped for when you do, so you can build your Arcwing launcher, we're going to need to go down to Cetus so that we can start farming the materials, which is the Iridite, the Grokdral, and the Fish Oil. So we're going to head down to Cetus now so we can start doing this. And for the Iridite and the Grokdral, what I recommend that we do, and I don't know why I'm doing this the long way, I went to fast travel here because it's way quicker. And you want to go to Konzu. You have some stuff he wants to say to you. What I'm going to recommend that you do is go on this lowest level bounty right here. This is actually going to reduce the level of the enemies out on the plains. Now, something to note is, depending on when you come and do this, if you go into high level missions, the amount of erudite and grotural you'll get from the containers that I'm going to show you guys can increase. So for example, most of the time on these two, you're going to get one. When you get here, it can be between one and three. Usually it's one or three, so you don't normally get them in twos, but you'll start seeing threes drop. And then by the time you get to this high level one, it'll be in fives. So if you want to do it like early game, it's going to take longer. If you want to do it later game, it'll be quicker, but obviously you've got to wait longer for that to happen. So just that's just something for you guys to bear in mind. You can do this whenever you're ready. I'd 
the planes of Eidolon will wait for you. You can come back when you're a higher level. But either way, I'm going to set the planes to a nice low level. I'm obviously going to go out on my own so I can get this started. So now that we're out here, we should start getting some markers for where our bounty is. And what I recommend is using this here platform so that you can fast travel on over. I find these to be a bit uh, finicky. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. As long as it's working, just give it a go. And if you did follow my advice and pick a vault at the beginning, you're going to be real happy because we're able to move pretty fast across the plains because of Vault's uh, second ability, which is real cool. So we're going to head on over and we're going to go and do this bounty. But what I'm going to try and do is just point some stuff out for you guys so that you can see what you should be looking for. Again, so this first one is a bit like a mobile defense. I don't really want to explain the bounties too much. We'll be able to do that when we cover standing. Uh, but this is a good example of something I need to show you. So this one is mission specific. So I'll put this in here and I need to defend it. I'll put a shield over it so it's a bit more better defended. But you'll see other versions of this particular vehicle as you go around. And often at the camps that the game will send you to. Just interact with this and it'll open this up. And this will give you some random resources. All of them useful for something. So whenever you see one of these, make sure you open it up and collect those resources. And there we go. We actually got three Grok Troll and three three iridite right there so that's pretty good actually uh, so we're going to move on to the next one we'll cut forward to anything that i need to show you guys okay i should probably talk about the bombalists sort of like these little alien sentient things there's not much we can do about them early game unless you have access to some stuff which we'll be covering in future videos unfortunately you are not going to be able to defeat them so just do your best to defend yourself as you see, I just put a barrier up there just so they couldn't shoot me. But yeah, for, for now, we can't really interact with them properly. You can, like, you can pretty much stun them, but they're just going to come back to life. So I would just kind of, yeah, as much as you can, just ignore them for now. Okay, just to prove concept, I'm going to show you guys that we can open this. Just heal it. There we go, get some aerodyne out of it. That's real convenient, actually. This is what Grokshrill normally looks like if it's not in, like, another form. So just make sure you're breaking little containers like this. They do spawn quite commonly around all of the different camps. That's why I wanted to make sure... I showed you guys one, got another one right here, look. Um, at the end of doing the bounties, I am going to show you guys a tiny route where you can get some to spawn if you want to kind of come out here and do it in more of an open world way. As you can see, like, just because we're following the bounty, we got led to this camp and then we got, like, quite a bit of it right here, actually. It's quite nice. And this is what usual iridite formation is going to look like. They can spawn pretty much anywhere. They can spawn in enemy camps, they can spawn out in the wild, they can spawn in caves. Um, so just as you're going around, you'll just need to keep an eye out for them. Obviously, all of my bounties are now finished. And at this point, you are free to just go roaming around Plains of Eidolon for as long as you like. If you see little camps, you'll see like a little um, setter sign that comes up. And that will allow you to... Oh, got another one there. Like lovely. Allow you to restart the bounties. So you can stay out here and do some more bounties if you wish to. Or you can do it more free from. It's entirely up to you how you go about doing this. Just bear in mind, you're going to need hundreds. This can take quite a while, depending on how lucky or unlucky you are at finding all of the uh, different spawns and stuff for the Iridite. Obviously, we're doing pretty good here, so that's quite nice. So just because it's easy to see, if you want to repeat some bounties, here we are just outside of the, uh, the area where you would come out. You can see that's where we would have come out from. That's where the teleport pad was. We come in here, we can reset the bounties. I'm also going to do that right now. Instead, what I'm going to finish on is a little route that you can take. Obviously, this stuff just spawns everywhere, which is kind of nice. Um, and just a little route that you can take if you want to kind of have a loop you can do. Maybe as a thing instead of doing bounties. I don't know why you would, but just, just in case that's something that somebody wants. What we can do instead of doing bounties is we can head to the... This does have a north, doesn't it? Yeah, north is that way. So we can head to the east. No, west. West, west. This is west. Left is west. Uh, we will come across a little pond with a cave, which is where we're going to go to. And try and keep this mostly whole. Here we go. It can be aerodite all along all this. I'm just not. I'm not looking like too quickly right now because I want to just show you guys a bit more of a route rather than actually collecting it. Here we have aerodite. So there's usually either aerodite or grotural in the middle of this lake. One of the two usually spawns, and you get a little bit of it around the edges as well. But the thing that you can go and explore is the cave. Just come on in here. Um, and we, you'll immediately see that. On these little walkways, there's usually a couple of Grokdral um, barrels. Here we have one there. And, this, and that'll basically continue through the cave. Once you get to the very bottom, there'll be Iridite spawns and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not here to give you a tour of the cave, but you guys can go and explore that it's at your leisure. In addition to that, then, once you've dealt with the cave, you can then come on back out. I'm going to head a bit further north. I'm pretty much straight north because there's a couple of the, uh, the trucks that we saw earlier just over this way. So we've got one right here. This one's actually a camper who can uh, get more missions as well. And as you can see, good chance of having 
more materials that we need to spawn. Get this opened. That. I think we can get any more missions in here. It hasn't spawned it for us. But I'm sure I'm sure it does let you. Sometimes. And then if we just go up the cliff, we'll see that there's another container right here. Obviously giving us other materials as well, which is actually which is actually quite kind of useful. This stuff is gonna be useful for all sorts of different things that you can build. And then all we need to do is follow this road. Um, or you can just go straight to where we're going to be, where it's going to lead us, which is to the camp up that way. This bit is a little bit harder, so if you find you're taking too much damage up here, you can just pass over it. Uh, but this does spawn quite a few of the grok drill barrels around the camps and stuff. So I can like, go in here, just double check in here. Uh, there's not one in this one today. Come on, over, where are we? Got sort of here right now, but no. And in here, maybe. I've had one in here before. Not today. There's a couple. Check up on this one. Nope, nothing there. So just have a quick look around this. Uh, you can be as thorough or as not thorough as you want. Obviously, every light can spawn anywhere where there's basically grass, so it can spawn along all of this as well. Uh, and then once you're done in the camp, you're going to want to come on down this way towards the big, large-looking lake. Here we die again. Thank you. Gonna want to keep coming slightly over until we come over this way. We will find another one of the large open containers, which apparently I've already opened. So, <laughs> just worth noting. Ignore all of this big stuff. That's probably an idle one we just heard. We're not going to be doing anything with those. Um, and then once you've kind of done the loop, you can head back to set us. You can see it's just directly ahead of us. Um, this is where we got some of the Eurydite earlier before, and you can reset it, you can either go back into um, Cetus, you could do it as maybe like the end of your bounties like I just did, just to up, up the amount of resources you're gaining. Um, whatever it is that works for you, um, just so that you can get all of the resources that you need. Those combined with the fish oil, which should come after this, I've already recorded fishing, so I'm going to add that just on the end of this, so that all of the resources are covered. We should now have enough to go on in and get the Arcwing Launcher segment building. Once that's done, we can actually build the Arcwing Launcher and add it to our gear wheels. Let's get that done. So here we are, Arcwing Launcher requires Iridite, Grokdrol, and some Oxium. I guess I haven't actually done an Oxium farm video yet, it's because we're not in a very good place to farm it. But if you do need more Oxium, it drops the best at this stage of the game in the survival that is here somewhere it's gonna be v prime isn't it yes so you want to do v prime and there are flying oxium drones i'm gonna get you a picture of. let's go let's go in there let me show you one of these okay so it took a while to get one to spawn this is what you're looking for this big looking osprey thing this is the juno oxium osprey be careful because when they charge you and explode it used to be i don't know if it's still the case Used to be that you might not get the oxygen from you if you let them charge you. Every time you kill them, they do always drop some oxygen. Now, I don't know if they become more common as we go along. They used to. It's, it's just been a while since I've been on the on these early missions. So, um, usually I'll farm these much later on. So, I would highly recommend bringing um, friends with you just because the more people you have here, the more that are going to spawn. So, Obviously, because we're going about getting the Arcwing, highly recommend getting some clan members in on, on an Oxium farm or something. Everybody always needs more Oxium because it's a, it's a rarish material that you need a lot of. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, that's that's how you're going to get Oxium. That's how you can get it early, at least. Um, if you have, like, a better place, that you get yours, like maybe on one of the defense missions or something, let us know in the comments. I'll be, um, I'm sure it'll help somebody that happens to watch. But that's how you're going to get the Oxium so that you can get your Arcwing segment building. Good, so we have 12 hours to wait until the Arcwing Launcher segment is built. At which point we will be able to start, I think it's in gear, the Arcwing Launcher. From there, it only takes half an hour, and I'm going to show you guys how to equip it on a separate account. First, I've got to teach you all how to fish so that we can get some fish oil. Okay then, so to start fishing, we need to make our way back to Cetus. And this time, we're going to fast travel to the Fisher High Luke. Now, if you've done some of the bounties, like I said earlier in the video, you should now be able to browse wares, and you'll find you'll be able to purchase some stuff. I think I've already ranked up one, so you won't have, like, all of this available. But you will be able to pick a fishing spear, and you will be able to grab some 
some luminous dye. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab five of these just so we've got plenty to go fishing with. And uh, this just highlights the fish, makes it much easier. Uh, pick yourself a fishing spear. I don't think which one you pick makes very much difference. I've obviously already picked up the Lanzo fishing spear. With that done, you're going to want to come into your gear wheel. You can, in fact, come into our arsenal here directly from Cetus. So on over to the gear wheel. Make sure your fish is equipped in your gear wheel. Otherwise, you're going to get to where we're going. And that is not going to be the most convenient for you. Again, so once we're out on the Plains of Cetus, I'm going to show you guys two spots to fish, um, depending on the time of day. One is better than the other, but it's a pain in the ass at night time unless you can deal with the Sentinels. So we're going to start out by going to the east here. Or the right, or the right, as you come out of Cetus. I know, I know they say Cetus, but Cetus comes out of my, uh, comes off my tongue easier. We're gonna cross to the other side of the lake here, and we're gonna head north. Now, of course, because it's night time, you could get an Eidolon spawning. We're gonna pretty much completely ignore it. It's basically like an elephant in the game. Basically, if it aggroes on you, we've got no chance. But as long as we leave it alone, it should leave us alone. And we're gonna come. So you can see where I am on the map right now. Hopefully, obviously, it's a bit see-through. But kind of just across the river from where all this main stuff in the middle is. You can see there's like a, a shrine across. And I'm just going to come onto this little kind of watery board. But don't go too deep because otherwise it's going to start draining your energy. But we don't want to, don't really want that. We're going to stick some luminous dye out here. And on this part, we're going to get a lot of eels. Each of the different fish is going to give you different materials. And all the different materials are all useful in their own way. But all of the fish will give fish oil. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some eels from this one before I show you guys the other spot. Okay, so just to make sure that I'm kind of like showing you guys like what I'm doing. I was over at my spot over there and then I got interrupted by some sentinels. So I have just decided, well, bombalists, but I always call them sentinels. I just crossed over to the other side. Bit of a pain in the ass, but it works wherever you are, really. I just like have certain spots that I like to go to. This one's pretty, pretty decent, actually. There were some sentinels in the middle, but they seem to have despawned now as well. Okay, then, so we've got some eel. Actually getting a selection of fish is pretty good as well. Getting chalk X to plaques, I call what it's called now. Chalk something plaques. Um, that's going to be pretty useful for other stuff as well. I'm going to show you guys the other one. Again, we've already been to this pool before. It's the one, the space is just the, literally the other way. Oh, look at that, some extra iridite. Look, just make sure you're keeping your eye out as you're doing your fishing. It's going to give you a hand. We do need 100 of each, which is crazy. Honestly, I forgot how long this takes. I, like, it's just crazy, actually. Like, obviously, my account is kind of grandfathered in. I was already prepared for all of this stuff when it all came out. It's easy to forget just how long this can take. So, you know, maybe don't do all of this in one go. Like, if you need to, you know, do this, like, kind of piecemeal and do it bit by bit, then uh, definitely, you know, take the effort and do it do it that way around. Now, because it's night time, I'm going to choose to fish from this end. You can see, um, usually there's, like, an Eximus in the middle of there where we'd usually get, like, an Iridite or a Rock Drill Drum. I've got this one out there now. But at night time, there's almost always Grenier fighting Sentinels here, and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But during the day, this is actually a very good spot. So I'm just going to get this out here just so you can see that there's fish in here as well. Okay, there we go. The dye's working now that we've got, we've got fish appearing. Water slung fish. Different type of fish. We can get different materials from it. The uh, the sentinels seem to have been nice and stayed over that way. The rocks in the middle are better. So if you can get over here without um, aggroing the enemies, that is where you want to be. So I'm going to uh, use this last dye that I have so I can see all of the fish. I'm going to get some fish from this one. We're going to turn that in when we get back to set us. Okay, so once you've obviously finished fishing, used all of your lures up. Obviously, if you need more, you can always do more bounties, get the standing, use that on some more of your uh, dies. Obviously, I'm absolutely terrible at fishing. I've got, good, I've got barely anything. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this in, though. So come back into your fast travel menu here. We're going to go back to the Fisher High Luke. And then we just need to cut the fish. <clears throat> now, it's worth noting, if you want to mount any of these, you can save the large ones if you want for later. I'm just going to select them all. And even doing poorly like me, you get... What's that? 67. So pretty good there. I've got some Chark X. Electroplax. Yeah, I was nearly there. <laughs> um, and with all that, we can go back to the Orbiter, where once our... Um, our quick segment is finished. We can provide some circuits. That's just make it easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that. We've got the iridite, the grocdural, and the fish oil all ready. Okay, so once you've got your arcing stuff built and claimed out of the foundry, obviously mine's been done on this couch for quite a while. You're gonna want to come to your gear wheel. Mine is already selected, but let's just assume that yours was on none. Pick an empty spot. I like here because I did. Um, 
convenient to use. I'm going to show you guys in a second about deploying this. Um, but yeah, once you've got that in your gear wheel, what we can now do is head on. So let's go to the Planes of Eidolon just so I can show you guys. So once we're here, if we press down on the D-pad, I don't know what it is on PC. You can see we have the Arcwing launcher and you can select it. And then we, uh, we're up. No, we're playing, playing with the Arcwing on the Planes of Eidolon, which is real cool. Um, if, for whatever reason, it doesn't let you get onto it, like, see if it, this on like weird surface here yeah this will stop it look i find i get good selection and this is why like in a convenient place i could just jump into the air and we're good so that is how you are able to use your arcwing on the open world segments of the game i hope that helps you out you take a bit of time i know maybe you don't target it specifically don't like get stuck here but um yeah i hope that helps you out and i'll see you all again soon